Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Kathy at Attic Treasures Etc. And after having finished the Defemberember challenge and making things from all the prompts, I have quite a few scraps left over. And I think you can see from this picture that I'm uh, showing you, I have quite a few scraps over here on the side of my desk. So my intention was to clean up, but I think some of the fun of cleaning up is figuring out how to make stuff from the scraps that you have and how not to throw things away. So I have some baking paper here that I've been using. This is just regular um, unbleached, uh, what do you call it, uh, parchment paper. And I decided to make some little bags out of it for my junk journals and just add some scraps to it. So I have these four little bags here. Make sure you can see them. And I think they came out really cute. So I thought what I would do is take another piece of the baking paper, which I did. This is the, the third one that I have. So I took one about that same size and I cut it down. So I've got enough to make, out of that one sheet, four more little bags. So what I've done is I want, well, for the, for the bigger ones, these are four by four squares. And then I'm cutting off half an inch on each side on uh, just one edge or one one half of the bag. And then I'll fold these over and then sew it shut. But before I sew it shut, I want to decorate the front of it. And so I didn't do that with this one. I should, let me, let me back up. So by decorating it, I felt like it was easier to sew the things on since, you know, nothing really sticks to this. But this was the first one that I made and I didn't sew anything on before I sewed the side shut. So what I did was I just made a little cluster and then I stapled it in with my, with my tiny attacher and it was able actually to fit inside enough to where I feel like it's a pretty secure fit. But these other ones, I made um, kind of arranged the cluster or what it was that I wanted to put on it and sewed around it while I had it just sitting on the top of the bag or on the front of the bag and then I sewed the sides shut. With, and that's what I'm going to do with these. These little ones, I'm going to follow basically the same process but I don't have any extra to, to tuck in and um, on the sides because they're already pretty narrow. So these will just have the, their sides sewn just like that. And that's fine. Um, the only reason I was tucking in the sides is because I wanted to use the whole four inches and also because I felt like it made the sides a little bit stronger. So I'm going to set these aside and we can get started because what I'd like to do is make four more bags and then I have them to put in my junk journals with some little goodies and stuff like that inside. I also uh, took some more of my master board that I cut up. Um, I have quite a bit left over. I have two cards that are already cut to size and then I had this piece that was on a just a piece of uh, wallpaper that was sitting over here on the side of my desk and I just grabbed some scraps from from over there and added it so I'll be doing another little series with just these and this time I'll make sure that I stay within the allotted two and a half by three and a half dimensions when I did the um, the the artist trading cards for the ephemera ember prompt one of the items uh, was leather and I didn't know how to attach the leather except to make a little tab but since then I found out that you really can't have anything extending outside those dimensions so live and learn though that those are the first ATCs I made so I'll be making some more of those but uh, probably not in this video I'm, so I'm gonna set those things over to the side on my right so that I can you know think about those in a day or two. <laughs> so I have been really inspired by Tanya Bowman on Taddy Treasures where she did seven days of working with her scraps and she came up with some beautiful um, results just working with the scraps and, and stuff that she had on hand and so I thought I would do something similar because you know and I probably won't come up with anything nearly as wonderful as she did but I'm gonna give it a try 
And I'm going to start with making these little bags. So I've got my uh, baking paper. It's, it's folded in half. And I'm uh, uh, putting the fold line right on a line on my mat, on the grid. And then I'm just going to take my craft knife and just cut um, down to that line half an inch from each edge. I don't want to go beyond that, just on each edge. Let's do it this way. As long as I have the fold line on a line on my mat, then I can cut just straight to that. So that was a super, super fun challenge. I am so glad I did it this year. I really, really enjoyed it. Okay, now I'm just gonna cut these little guys off. And I don't mind throwing these little strips away. I told myself you don't have to keep everything that lands on your desk. Okay, now I'm just going to line it up again and fold those uh, fold those flaps in. And I'm just going to use my ruler here as a guide. Too. I've already cut the flaps off. Now I just need to fold, fold those uh, the extra part inside. Okie dokie. So I'm going to use this as the front of the bag for these two, so that the folded in parts will be on on the back which it doesn't really matter, but that's just the way I'm doing it. So I'm going to take my uh, stays on ink and my script stamp, and I'm going to decorate uh, just using this, this stamp. Oh, well, I might as well put this underneath here <laughs> so I don't stamp out all over my, my mat. And um, I found that this stays on worked pretty well. I only did it on one of them so far, but it seems to be working. It's not coming off, which that was my concern. So I'm just going to do some random stamping. And who knows how much of this will actually show, but some of it will, so that's okay. The trick is to allow the, the ink to dry. Okay, so that's good. And now I just want to figure out from my stash over here to my left, um, I think I'm going to give this one one more one more stamp. Okay, that's good. All right, now I need to figure out what to do with the items here on my left to make little clusters to put on top of my uh, my bags here. <laughs> And I like. I think I want to use up some of these that I crumpled up and turned into um, the snippet strip, the grungy snippet strip. That was fun. And I have uh, some fabric here and a little bit of lace trim. And I've got this little circle. So let's take one of these and 
oh, this little circle with the, um, what do you call these? The Pussy Willow? Man, I wish I had some more. This, this paper is an old, from an old stack of scrapbook paper, and I just love this paper, but it's almost gone now, and I don't think I'll ever find it again. It was by Kane Company. Super pretty. Let's see what else do we have over here. I have this little butterfly that I cut out. If I'm going to do this butterfly, I think I want to um, emboss it with some embossing glaze. So I'm going to grab my embossing dauber and the, uh, I think I'm going to use a shade of blue maybe to go with the other uh, papers, the other items. Scraps. Let's just call them scraps. Let's give it a little contrast. I'll use rusty hinge rather than a blue. So I'm using the Distress Embossing Glaze and this color is Rusty Hinge. Okay, so that came out pretty good. I'm just going to take some of this Gilder's Paste Wax and go around the edges and cover up that little spot where my tweezers were. Sometimes I wonder, you know, we, we do this and think, okay, th these are all just scraps. Is it worth putting all this time and stuff into it? But I just love the way they turn out. So, yeah, I think it's worth it. And what else do I have over here? I have a little piece of this animal print fabric. Okay, I think that's going to work. So I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and sew it up and I'll be right back. Okay, I think this is coming out really cute. So now what I did here is I just went through with a zigzag stitch and um, and caught, you know, these, these three items and then another zigzag stitch across this to hold that down. Other than that, you know, there are... You know, you could even use part of this as a little a little tuck spot for a ticket or something like that. And then I just used a straight stitch to go up the sides. And now I'm just going to glue this little butterfly on because it can be glued on now. It doesn't have to be sewn on because I'm just gluing it to the paper. Super cute. Um, and then I'd like to take the uh, liquid pearls and I'm just going to go down, oh before I do that because I don't want to mess up the liquid pearls once they're in there or on there, I'm going to take my pinking shears, I just got these at a thrift store, I have a good pair for sewing for fabric that I would never use on paper, but this pair is really excellent for, for paper and then I just give the, the top a little zigzag edge. So I'll be using those again. But I want to take the liquid pearls and just go along the body of this uh, butterfly. And it's clogged. <laughs> so of course it's clogged. There. And I'm going to set this aside out of my reach so that I don't smash the liquid pearls because that always happens <laughs> if I don't put it out of my reach. You can work on this small one now. And this one doesn't have the flaps that fold in, but that is all right. I have another little butterfly that I cut out of um, some... It was a tea bag that I had put some gesso and Mod Podge on and then stamped on and then I cut out that little butterfly. And oh, it was it was from that. <laughs> so let's see. 
How about this tea bag? You can cut off a piece of this tea bag or tear it off, I guess. Another one of these scraps that are uh, stained with uh, mica stain, or no, just what was it? I think it was just distress ink. And then maybe this little piece of fabric. it needs something more. Some leftover dictionary page in French. Maybe we could incorporate some of that. That looks pretty good. But let me uh, ink up the edges on this. I'm going to leave that tattered edge even though it's in the margin. And then I also have some coffee here in a spray. So I'm just going to give this a quick dry. Okay, I think that worked out really well. And let's fray up the edge of this a little bit. And I think this little butterfly needs some gold edging as well, just for fun. Very slippery so this stuff is always sliding all over the place <laughs> okay I shall be right back well I, I'm really liking how this is turning out so far so I'm going to glue on the butterfly and then I have that little uh, fabric flower that I'm going to spray dye with some mica spray um, now, th those flowers came from a sweater that a friend of mine was selling on Facebook Marketplace, and it had these little flowers all over the front of it. And so I texted her, and I said, I want to buy that sweater. And she says, it's never going to fit you. And I said, oh, I'm not going to wear it. <laughs> so she laughed, because she knows what I do. Um, so this is Winter Frost Distressed Mica Stain. And I'm just going to give this a couple little squirts. There we go. That's all it takes. And I'm going to glue it right onto the paper. So let me just uh, put, I'm going to use Fabri-Tac for that. And I'm just going to put a little spot right down here. I love that color. And there, isn't that adorable? <laughs> Oh, I just love making these. Okay, so that's done. And on to the next one. And this is, oh, I was going to tell you what I did here is I just took, um, I just did a zigzag stitch across here and a zigzag stitch across here. And then that anchored this piece, this piece, and this piece. And then I went around the whole thing with a zigzag stitch before I sewed up the sides. And we have to fix the top make, to make it look like a little bag. There. there. Now it's done. Now if you don't have a sewing machine, you can always make your cluster 
first and then um, staple it on. But I don't know how you, you know, what glue you would use to glue the sides down to make the bag. Okay, so let's um, let's work on this one because I've got this scrap of lace here and I think it would be good on the front. I have more of this tea bag, but I'd like to just add to it as well. I think this is one of my favorite colors of blue. And that is from a tea bag. Maybe we can, that was Passion Tea, beautiful purple color. And this is from a tea bag that I um, Mod Podged and did some collaging on, just the tea bag itself. So I'm just going to cut around it with these pinking shears to give it a more defined shape. Oh, there's stuff on the back. <laughs> okay. Oops. You know, I've got, that has some green in it, and I've got this green tea bag too. Maybe I'll do the green instead of the blue. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, off to my sewing machine with this little cluster. All right, so I want to use um, another flower. And I and in this little location right here, but I'm going to dye it with the uh, fresh balsam mica stain because this comes out a really pretty shade of green. And to shake these up, according to Tim Holtz, you need to ring it like a bell. And I guess that gets the uh, everything mixed up really well on the bottom, which is where the I don't know, he called it sludge. <laughs> Super pretty. I want to put something, um, I want to use that, that overspray. We'll put it on some pieces of book page and just glue the little flower on here in the corner. And voila! Trim these threads. And then use the pinking shears on the top. And we have one more cute little bag. Okay, I'm just loving this. This is too much fun. So I think I will go ahead and use this other piece as a focal point. So I'm just going to, uh, I think I'll leave it as it is. There's paper on the back, but that's okay. Gives a little more strength. And add some more lace. And why not add this? Let's figure out a good way to do it. Okay. I like that. Super simple. Be right back. Okay, another success. I really, really like those colors together. 
and I think I'll do another flower in that fresh balsam and this will have kind of a little green tinge to it the whole bag put a little fabric tack here in the corner And then trim the top and voila another bag so I think that that's going to do it for today that was my mission that I wanted to accomplish so now I have eight little bags that I can use in my junk journals there we go now you can see them Oh, the other one is <laughs> over here. <laughs> there, I didn't, I did not touch the liquid pearls. So I hope you found this enjoyable and maybe got some inspiration on how to use some of your scraps. Just uh, pick out whatever is sitting next to you and, um, you know, go to town, make some clusters, make some little bags like this out of parchment paper. You can use wax paper too. I have wax paper that's got um, the mica stain on it and, uh, you know, just, oops, that went all over my hands. Just have fun. Just go to town with what you have and just what's sitting next to you. And I really love this process because I don't really like throwing things away and I really don't like sorting through a bunch of teeny tiny little scraps and figuring out where to put them so I don't have to throw them away. It's just more fun to make things with them and it forces you to be a little more creative. So I hope you enjoyed this today and if you did I would really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up. That tells YouTube to um, promote my channel more and that is good for my channel so if you're if you're so inclined that would be greatly appreciated. And also, if you would subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome too. And if you are a subscriber and you're back, welcome back. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining me today, all of you. I appreciate all of you very much. So happy crafting, everybody. I will see you in my next video. And don't forget to always let the serendipity find you. Bye-bye.